In our last meditation, I'd like to throw a question to you. How do you identify a real Catholic Christian? How do you identify a real disciple of the Lord? In our common day-to-day -day life, people might give different answers. If you are pro-abortion, you cannot be a good Catholic. If you are pro-divorce or pro-contraception, you will not be a good Catholic. Or you go to Mass every day, you pray the Rosary, you venerate the Blessed Virgin Mary. These are, for some people, signs of a good Catholic. For some people, it is charity. For some people, it is donating to the poor. And that is a sign that they are good Catholics. For some people, it is being engaged socially in the work of justice and peacemaking. These are signs that we use to prove to ourselves and to identify in one another as signs that we are good Catholics. But really, what are the signs of a good Catholic? What is the litmus test of a good Catholic? First is obedience to the commandments. It is public and private integrity. That I obey the Ten Commandments publicly and I live the Ten Commandments privately even if no one sees me. The Ten Commandments are ten for everybody. The Pope must obey Ten Commandments. The CEO must obey Ten Commandments. The child must obey Ten Commandments. There is no exception. There is no exception that says, I can only obey six. There is no exception that says, because you are good, you should obey 12 commandments. No. It is only 10 and always 10. And that 10 commandments are the standards of holiness and obedience. Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill is for everybody. There is no excuse that because you're king or president, then you can kill. The Ten Commandments are good for everybody, publicly and privately. That is one sign of a good Catholic. The second sign of a good Catholic is social justice. Social justice, which is translated into preferential attention, time, talent for the poor. It is not true that we must treat one another equally. No. Because if we treat one another equally, the poor will be at a disadvantage. We must treat the poor with extra love, with extra time, with extra care. Because the poor are our masters. The poor are our lords. The Lord himself warned us that whatever we do to the poor, we do to him. They are our lords. And you must be very careful with what you do or not do for the poor because God is going to hold you accountable for that. The third sign is community life. Nowadays, we hear of people saying, I confess direct to God. I pray direct to God. It is good to pray direct to God. It is good to tell your sins direct to God. But God himself tells us that our personal, private relationship with him must be nurtured by community life. No one goes to heaven alone. We go to heaven as a community, as a family, as a barcada of friends. How is your community life? The pandemic has reduced it to virtual relationships. But there is no substitute to the human touch. There is no substitute to real presence. Because when God wanted to show his love for us, he did it by saying, I am with you. I will never leave you. The fourth sign of a good Catholic is gratitude. Our reason for doing anything or saying anything or embarking on a project is always because we are grateful to God. 
It is not for the sake of popularity. It is not for the sake of revenge. It is not for the sake of getting even with others. It is not for the sake of getting something in return. It is not for the sake of keeping people beholden to you. No. The reason for doing things is gratitude. I have received so much goodness from the Lord, and therefore I must share goodness with one another. These are four signs of a good Catholic. Obedience to the commandments publicly and privately. Social justice, keeping in mind that the poor are our lords, the poor are our masters. Community life, keeping in mind that personal prayer and community prayer are two sides of the same commitment to the Lord. Gratitude. And we are known as people who celebrate gratitude. What is gratitude? A Eucharistia. We are known as people who celebrate Thanksgiving day by day because we have been blessed more than we can ever deserve. But if you insist on asking me, what is the one litmus test of a good Christian? I will say, love your enemies. Love your enemies. That is what makes us good Christians. You may obey the commandments, but the test for obeying the commandments is you will not desire that your enemy be killed. You will not desire that your enemy suffer misfortune. You will not curse your enemy. The litmus test of loving your enemies is that if the poor is also your enemy, you also remember that the poorest of the poor is actually your enemy. To help the poor is quite romantic. But to help your enemy, who is poorest among the poor, is heroic. It is sanctifying. It is the mark of a real disciple. We give to the poorest of the poor, the homeless in the streets, those who are uh, victims of calamities, yes. But you know the real poorest of the poor? The enemy that you don't like to help. The enemy that you don't like to be seen with you. The enemy whose suffering makes you a little bit happy because you are saying sweet revenge, divine revenge. Love your enemies. Are you willing to be uh, photographed with your enemy in a community? Are you willing to attend mass and be seated with your enemy and shake hands at the kiss of peace? Love your enemies. Love your enemies by saying to them, thank you. Love your enemies by saying to God, Lord, thank you for these people who consider me their enemy. Why? Because they keep me humble, they keep me rooted in you, and they challenge me to be able to say, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. My dear brothers and sisters, you want to be a Christian? Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Because the mark of real Christianity is to be able to say, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. We must keep in mind that the Lord wants to save the oppressed and the oppressor. The Lord wants to save the criminal and the victim. The Lord wants to save the bad and the good. The Lord wants to save enemies and friends. And in heaven, enemies and friends will eat from the same table of the Lord. We better start doing it now because the enemy you fail to love here on earth will be your judgment when the Lord asks us, did you really love your enemies? That is the only identification that is asked of us.